We're going to do plant parts, right? But we are not going to have any notes like the last few weeks. We're not going to have any notes. Like you said, some of you already started by saying, oh, I'm going to write down my own notes on my paper. By now, you get a familiarity of how to conduct or how to attend these lessons, whether you should be taking your own notes. I leave it up to you. But they will be based on the question. So today we do something called, okay, let's look at this. What's that? This is a very common term in the science industry, which means, or in any industry, which means if you have, <clears throat> if you want to find a solution, you can actually work the answer backwards. You do this a lot in maths, right? So when someone is doing a reverse engineering, you actually have the solution. You have the solution, but you can actually work out the problem. Or you, so for example, you finish working out your math problem, right? Then you got the answer. Then you can work backwards to find out the working. Or your teacher gives you the answer because you got the wrong answer. So you work backwards to find out the working. So that's exactly what reverse engineering is. So today we're going to do a bit of reverse engineering. What does that mean? It means I'm going to go straight into the questions that you got for your work, homework, which I actually uploaded last week. <coughs> So those of you who have actually tried it, it's actually quite a big, quite a big uh, number of questions. If I can hear you coughing, means your your sound is not muted. So can you mute yourself? You just mute yourself, okay? Ready? Okay. So those questions that we went through, we are actually going to go through them straight away because there are two parts to today's lesson. One is plants and their parts, which is just the stem, the leaves, the roots, right? And then the second part is the transport system. How the sugar, which is the food, transports itself down and around the leaves and the roots and how the water goes from the roots to the rest of the parts of the plant. So that's the second part. So we have these questions really lined up for us to actually learn something regarding these two aspects, okay? So I just want you to go through the questions with me first. And then with the questions, we will do a reverse engineering at the end and find out, hey, what are the things that could be asked in this topic? And what are the things that we actually need to know in order to survive or to actually get marks from this topic? Okay, so no notes, no, not teaching you first. I'm going to go through the question first. By the end, you will know what needs to be known. Okay, so first question. I know half of you may not have done this. Uh, just because you're plain lazy or you didn't prepare or this is a last minute entry to the lesson, it's fine. You just have to do it quickly and catch up with us. The rest of you who have actually done it, which is good, then you will go through it a little faster. Okay, if the question is very easy, if the question is not so easy, I will slow down as well. Okay, so the first question is actually e easy. Okay, so it's going to just ask you questions about this, right? Identify X, Y, and Z. And it's going to be leaves, stem, and, and roots. roots. Why? Because? Because the roots absorb water and mineral salts. Who said that? What's your name? Nitya. Nitya, can you mute your... Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right now, I don't need any class participation. I just need you guys to oh, pay attention. Okay. Okay, so you need leaves, stems, and roots, which are the answers to this because you just look up for the question, does it make food? And it says yes. And there's only one plant part that makes food. That's the leaves. No other question about that. So therefore, I straight away identified this as my first answer. Does it hold the plant upright? That must be the stem. So that's why the second answer. Does it absorb water? Roots. Okay, so that's why this question is too easy. We should move along. Second question, slightly needs a bit of thinking. Is the answer B or C or D? Okay, I'm sure all of you know the answer should have been 500 minus 200 equals to 300 ml of water was absorbed by the one with the roots. So 300 ml of water was absorbed. So a lot of you may put answer D, but it's wrong. Okay, D is the wrong answer. Because if you see the control setup of B, 
the setup, it actually lost 50 ml of water without roots. So actually 50 ml of water is being evaporated during this process. That means just by sitting down there, it's going to lose 50 anyway. So therefore, A must have also have lost that 50 due to evaporation, due to evaporation. So only 250 was due to roots. This is how you calculate. This is a little bit of math here. You have to pick up the difference this way. Okay, now you know why C is the answer and not D. Okay. Question, very interesting as we go along. Okay, this one is another one. So based on your knowledge about how plants grow, how they need light, how they need water, that's just not enough. You need to have some experiment to see if you actually understand how they absorb light, how they absorb water. So here, we cover everything around the plant, except we give them a small little window to absorb the light. So let's do that. They absorb the light. They absorb the light. However, the plant Y is rotating. Means it's turning. That means that the window will keep moving. So the light is going to come from here. The light is going to come from here after one. The light is going to come from here after one. Okay. So which one is the answer? Now this is a bit tricky. Those of you have not tried, I'm going to give you one 30 seconds to try. Which will be the resulting plant structure? You can actually type the answer to me, okay? Type. Teacher, what is the previous answer? Previous answer was C. C, C. Okay, this is it, uh, what is the answer for okay? question one? This question. Um, what's the question for, what's the answer for question one? One is also C. Okay, thank you. One is so easy, I don't need answer from me. So this one, just I wrote it down. Typing, okay. Noted, okay. Answer should be, we actually answer for X is easy, right? Because the plant, this is like basic, since primary three, living things respond to changes. Okay, that is the first thing. Respond to changes. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Yes, okay. So now we look at how the plant X grows. It needs to turn towards the light. So this one is turn towards the light. Let me see. Let me see. Oopsie. Okay. Okay, so you see the turn towards the light. Turn towards the light. This one didn't turn. This one turned towards the light. Therefore, B is out, right? This is how we eliminate one answer because X should have turned towards the light. Whereas for Y, it has to grow to the right when the light comes from the right. It has to grow to the left when the light comes from the left. So forward when the light comes from forward. So it has to go a bit of crooked. So this one, A or B. This one, turn towards the right or so. This one, straight. This one, what is it? Can you see? Can you see a bit of left and right, left and right? So answer here should be C because it's continuously having light from different sides. So it's going to turn, 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 turn and end up going with a little bit of waves. Okay, this question is pretty long. Those of you who have not read it before, I'll give you another 30 seconds to read it quickly before I go through. Are we? the answer for question three? You will get the answers when I finish the lesson. So don't just be patient. Teacher Ali. Teacher Ali. What's the answer for three? The answer for three. D. D? Thanks. D. So far, the answers we have gotten is C, C, D, okay? D. 
carry on. Carry on, we carry on. Okay, this one, where the seed link, okay, which is the seed link? Okay, the one that is planted here, the seed link A and seed link B. But one has the seed leaves removed. Without seed leaves, they cannot grow. That's why B is not growing from the chart here. So you can see from the chart on the right, it's not growing. Whereas A is taking its time to grow. And the seed leaves are also reducing. So you need to know what happens during this chapter is about germination. Germination is the process mm. where you plant the seed and what will happen? The seeds will grow. Okay, so let's look at this slide. This slide tells us about seed germination. You plant a seed, it has to have the seed leaf. Without the seed leaf, you cannot have the plant growing. So you have germinating seed and then you have a primary root coming out. Where does the food come from? My God. Okay, you need to know this part. So this is a little bit of notes for you. Food is stored inside. Okay. So the seed leaf stores food. Yes. And provides the developing seed leaf food for all the things that you need to grow. And the seed leaf continues to develop and grow and soon its true leaves will appear and no longer depend on the seed leaf. So the seed leaves will reduce and the true leaves will come out. So the seed leaf will reduce in mass and the seed leaf will grow bigger and bigger. This is how the germination process takes place. So let's go back to the question and see what they want. They say based on the graph, what can you conclude about the growth of seed leaves? Try not to interrupt because I'm trying to teach here. So just Keep quiet until I ask questions, okay? Okay. So based on the graph, what can you conclude about the growth of the seedlings? What can you conclude? Read A, B, C, D, okay? The seedlings do not depend on the seed leaves. Is it true? It does depend. The seedlings start to make its own food once the shoots disappear. Hello? Hello? Okay, the seedlings start to make no, they do not make their own food. Joshua, the roots will grow downward first before the shoots start to grow. Okay, pause. And the last one is the mass of the seeds. Okay, decreases as the seedling grows. Why? Because this directly what is it sound? So it's based on the graph. Uh, so true. So answer is. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys read this slide again to make sure you understand and we'll go through the full notes at the end of the question. Okay, question five. Don't the side you can just happen. And view it, okay? Don't worry. Teacher Ali, will the notes be in the class prequisite? Yes. yes. The notes yes, be in be that. It's been like that for the last few weeks, right? Yes. Oh, hi. I cannot see the chat screen. Yeah, it said that someone oh. was the host now. He was the host now again. Who's the host? He left. He oh, yeah, then host. he came back again. But I he think he left the meeting. Baba Boy. JJ. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. 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 What's on hey. screen share? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Now it's better because earlier, all of you were trying to talk, right? I found my mute button. I mute all of you now. Okay, let's go on. Let's uh, hang on. Huh? You need to be, you need something. Is the video being shared?
Just hang on, guys. I need to see if I can open some of the share my screen. Okay, there we are. Okay, share screen. Can you see the screen now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, let's do this chat. Okay, if you can uh, hear me and you can see the screen, just type yes, I can see you. And just say yes, okay, just say yes. All right, good. We are back. We are back alive. Great. I have the Zoom, I have participants, and everything is ready to go. Okay. Great. Okay, let's go. Continue. Question five. Okay, you know the answers already. Huh? First of all, was C, C, D, D. Number five. Jace observe two pots of plants as shown and put it in a sunny location. Take note, it's a sunny location. Okay. And then after three weeks, she observed plant X grew healthily, plant, plant Y died. Why? Because plant Y does not have. This is the only thing that's missing, right? So which one of the following statement explains her observation? Oh, plant Y, plant X makes own food through its woody stem. Hey, food is not made through the stem. Okay. Plant X could make its own food. Okay. Through its leaves. Hey, that looks correct. Plant X takes in food from the soil. No, it only takes water from the soil, not food. Okay, so this looks correct. This is wrong. Plant X gets its food from fertilizer. No, plant X gets its fruit from leaves. Therefore, plant X will grow well, plant Y will not grow well because of the lack of leaves on plant Y. So answer is C. Is it C? No B. All right. Flow chart. Okay, this one no need to do. Very easy. Same as question one. Does it absorb water? Yes. Then its roots. Does it help to keep the plant upright? Yes. Then its stem. Does it make food? Yes. Then its leaves. Does it help to make food? Then what is this? What is S? Ah, so we don't know. We go and find out root, stem, leaf. Then it means S is. Flower. It could be fruit or flower, but the question is flower, so we take that and put in a C. Okay, this one is easy one. Jean set up an experiment as shown below. She placed plant X in beaker A and beaker B. She removed all the roots of the similar plant. Okay, here is an interesting thing. Huh? Sometimes you have questions where the diagram is not clear like this, so you need to rely on information okay even though the diagram looks like they both have roots okay this is due to printing okay, this is taken from somewhere so the picture is not clear so you may think oh both of them have roots how can you say both don't have roots but the question is very clear it says remove all roots so there are no roots here okay just take note okay so if there are no roots Jean what was trying what was she trying to find out she was trying to find out if the plant with the roots and the plant without the roots what is it happening to the water will it absorb the water is it is a plant absorbing water through the roots. She's just trying to confirm that because not all of us know that. Huh? You are in primary six or primary five. Okay, you know about how plants work. But if you are in primary one or you just started kindergarten, you are not going to know that plants actually absorb water only through the roots. For example, you go there and you see after it rains, the leaf is wet. And you probably, I mean, I'm talking about if you're a four-year-old or five-year-old, you probably think the Oh, the leaves actually absorb water because it's wet, right? It absorbs the rain. No, it cannot. So the water that comes from the rain will go to the soil and still absorb through the roots. It does not absorb through the leaves. So that's a misconception. But if you're clear about it, then... So for that, Jean is trying to do this experiment. So find out if the roots absorb water. Very easy. But that's not what we will always leave you with. Okay? Question one, always easy to warm you up. What about the second part? What will Jean observe? about the water 
level in beaker A after one week, if it is absorbing. So then now it's based on your info, you know. Now it's, you are smart enough to know that, oh, or you have learned from a science lesson that, oh, plants actually absorb through the root, so that for the water must be reduced. Whereas again, if you are in primary one or in kindergarten, you're not going to know that you're not going to answer. So this is questions that come about through your learning and you must have understood that plants actually absorb water through the roots. Therefore, the result will be what happens to the water level. Hello, look at this only. Only answer about the water level. What happens to the water level? Don't tell, tell me it makes food. Now it grows well, it grows taller, nothing. Just talk about the water level. Did it go down or did it not go down? That's it. The water level in beaker A would decrease. You see, simple answer gets you a simple one mark, whereas you write a lot of things about things that are not required will not get you the mark, may even give you zero for not understanding. So sometimes a student may write four lines. It doesn't mean I'll give him the one mark. I'll still put a wrong and give him zero because he's not answered the question which I wanted to answer, wanted him or her to answer. Explain why G set up beaker B as a control. Now, if you set up A, you put the roots with the roots, it, it decreases, right? Water will definitely decrease. You can actually conclude that, hey, you know, the water has reduced, so the roots have absorbed the water. But why do you need B there? Why do you need B beside it? Why do you spend so much time, extra time, extra effort to put in another one? Okay, to make sure, okay, that the change in water level is due to the roots, not due to other environmental factors like evaporation and so on. Because if you just have one, then the water may not, even though you put in with the roots, it may not have been absorbed by the root. What if water, the water can also be lost. Water can be lost. Water reduced the level, reduced. Doesn't mean, okay, there are two reasons. Roots can absorb the water or can evaporate as well. So how do you know for sure the roots are the one absorbing. So you need to control the other setup without roots to see how much the root absorbs. Remember earlier, in one of the multiple choice questions, there was a level where the roots actually absorb 250 only. The other 50 was actually evaporated. So you can, cannot conclude that 300 ml of water was absorbed by the roots, which is wrong because 50 ml was actually evaporated, remember? So this is a correct science observation, a correct science student's observation. A wrong science student's observation will be 300 ml of water was absorbed by the roots. So you see, you need control setups to, in order to get these numbers and to be actually co be correct. Okay. So continue, you see the question continues. Although the very first few questions are very easy. Now she sets up a new experiment. Hello, take note of that. Even though the diagram has not changed, you must take note of what, remember I said at the start, you need to take note of what they are saying in the question. Okay, also take note of Jean, read from an article about a new kind of plant that takes up four times as much water as plant X as she had used in her experiment. Okay. So plant Y, four times more water than X. Okay, so what is she going to do? She's going to try it. She's like, oh, is it? This plant is so interesting. Okay, let me try plant Y now. She takes away plant X, she puts plant Y. And if the claim in the article is true, state the difference. Hello, state the difference. Is that what we want? See how I do the, my questions. Huh? I only box up what I need to answer. The rest is not required. State the difference in what Gene will observe between the two experiments. Okay, experiment one. Water level reduced, right? Experiment two, water level reduced a lot more. How many times more? Four times more, hopefully. Because why? If the article is true. If the article is false, then she will not have observed more water being taken. Maybe she will observe the same amount of water. Not four times, maybe three times. So the article is not true. But here we assume the article is true and it takes four times as much. So you just need to tell us the water level in the beaker with plant Y will be lower than that of X by four times. It's also okay if you write this down. Okay, because we already assume it's true. Okay. But of course, during experiment is not exact. Roughly four times, roughly three times and a half is still fine. Okay. 
because you need to repeat the experiment, remember? You can't just do the experiment once. Okay? Yiling set up the following experiment. Okay? Again, same thing. Again, two bottles, one with plant, one without plant, one with the roots, roots in the water, blah, 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 everything, right? Now, however, one has a cooking oil. Please take note of this. So when I see my diagram, I also see what are the differences in the diagram. Here, no cooking oil, right? Yeah. Okay. So we know what we are going to expect. Okay. So that means the question is still a little bit different from what we've seen so far. Suddenly there is a cooking oil. Hey, what's this cooking oil all about? What's the cooking oil for? Do you need to cook the plant? Okay. She used two identical containers and poured equal amount of water. Everything same. She recorded the water level. She found that the water level decreased in setup F only. That's F. Okay. The one with the plant. Well, that's normal, that's obvious. I think that's what we should expect. What's the purpose of setup E again? Again, it's a control. Start with the C, right? To ensure a fair test. Control setup. Okay, these are the things we are learning as a, as we move along. So control setup for what? To ensure that the decrease in water is only due to the roots and not evaporation and not anything else. Okay, so that's why we have a control setup. We already just dis discussed this just now. Okay. <clears throat> so what's the next question then? Let's read together. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to ask someone to read for me so that I know they're still in the class. Jerry. Hi, Jerry. I unmute you already. You can talk. Cannot hear him. Okay. Jerry is not around. Okay. Now, next person. Who wants to read? Netanya. Hi, Netanya. No noise from Netanya. Okay, now we put up your hand. Chocolate Nitya. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Nitya. Hi. Um, can you read this question B for me? A teacher commented mm -hmm. that she did not carry out a fair test. Suggest what she should do to ensure a fair test. Give a reason for your answer. So you can see there are two marks. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, there are two marks earlier, a lot of one marks now is two marks. So we need to, why? Because they're asking you to suggest, see, I have to do this again and do this again. That's why I need two marks. Do this in your questions, okay? So that you will remember to write both the answers required. Sometimes you just leave with one answer and that's why you lose your best one's precious mark. One precious mark is still important. It's 50% of the mark here, you know? Every time you lose half a mark, that means Every question you lose half a mark, that means you get 50 upon 100, even though you get the paper full marks. I mean, all the questions, right? But you lose half, 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 half everywhere, which means you lose half on the whole paper, which means you get only 50 marks. So that's how it works. Huh? So even one mark is important. So give a reason and also suggest. First, you suggest, right? That's, a, that's the first one. Suggest what she should do to ensure a fair, fair test. She should add the oil, remember? Because one side has oil and one side has no oil. Okay, why? <clears throat> she should put a layer of cooking oil above the water. That's suggest. Now, reason. Why she should, should, she should do that? This ensures that the setup F does not evaporate as well and the change in water level is only caused by the roots absorbing the water. Okay, you can prevent evaporation because evaporation happens on the surface of the water where water particles leave the surface by placing oil on top. So oil is actually the protective gear or layer to help this water stay there, but water can still exit through the roots. So everything that the water um, went out of this beaker is 
to due to the roots only. It did not evaporate because you actually protected the evaporation process by not letting it to happen, right? So that's what you should do. Question nine, Alison carried out an experiment with four pots. Again, now two become four because you guys are getting better at this. What, what's happening? Plant Y, W, X, Z, all of them may or may not die, okay? Depends on the condition. Now, what do plants need the most? Plants to grow and not die, they need, of course, like all living things, they need air, water, food, right? So air is available right here. So what about water and food? To have water, you need to have enough roots. So plant X has the least roots, may die because there's not enough water. May die. So plant, if plant X dies, it's indeed because there's not enough water, because there's not enough roots. Now, plant W dies because it does not have enough food as the fruit is removed. Hey, does this fruit give the food or is it the leaf give the food? So it's not about the fruit. So this is false. Plant Y dies because it does not have flowers to attract insects. Hey, if you don't have flowers, do you mean you'll die? No flowers will die. Oh my God, that's going to happen. Happen. all the non-flowering plants in the world will die straight away. This is totally not true, right? We have flowering and non-flowering plants in the world. Here they are trying to say, hey, this one don't have flowers, you know. No flowers means no insect. No insect means no pollination, so it will die. No, we have non-flowering plants which will survive. Also. So this is totally wrong. Finally, it does not have leaves to make food. Which one? Plant Z. Yes, where are the leaves? It's missing. Because of that, there's no Food. Therefore, it may die. So you can see it goes back to the initial plan we had that all plants need air, food, and water. And since they don't have water in one and food in the other, they both can actually die due to the lack of food or the lack of water. So you cannot remove leaves, you cannot remove roots. These two are very, very vital for the survival of the plants. So we learned that from this question. So these are the answers. Okay, now this question back to germination, where we plant a seed. Now, many of you like to grow a plant from the seed, right? We have done this experiment at least once where you take a plant a seed and put it inside because the beauty of a plant growing out from nothing, where there is something, the seed is something, is beautiful. But what actually happens under the soil? You actually plant it under the soil, am I right? And then how come this seed that you plant does not lead, need light? Remember, something to grow needs light. No, 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 no. Something to grow actually needs air, water, and food. It does not need light. It needs light only for photosynthesis, to make food, to make food, okay? Okay, so, if it already has food, it doesn't need photosynthesis. So if during the seed, okay, when you germinate, it already has food inside the seed leaf. Okay, the seed leaf, which is this. Seed leaf has enough food inside to be able to survive the seedling stage where it's starting to grow. So it doesn't need photosynthesis, it doesn't need the leaves, it can still grow because it satisfies the food already. So the name of part X is actually seed leaf. Okay, it has its own food storage capability until you grow bigger and then you take the leaves, then the leaf will start to make food, then you don't need the seed leaves anymore. So that's why the number of seed leaves will reduce as the plant grows, which we saw in the previous questions as well. Okay, so which seedling will continue to grow? Explain your answer. Is it P, Q or R? P, Q or R? The one which has enough food to carry on living. That means it must have the seed leaf. That means it must look like this. So it must have that circle thing where the food is able to store the food. Where R do not have. 
So therefore, I'm going to erase R and say only P and Q can grow. Is that the answer? Can I move on? Cannot. I only wrote P and Q. I only get half mark. Half mark lost because you didn't explain your answer. So where's to explain? How to explain? Only P and Q have the seed leaf, which contain the food to be used for respiration. You can see the answer is lost so long. Now this answer, what am I doing? I'm highlighting. See, magic, magic. Okay, so I highlighted this. This is an important part for you to remember even memorize because it will be asked in your PSLE like thousands of times. Memorize the use of the seed leaf. What is this seed leaf for? What can it do? Is it to store food? If it store food, then it can use for respiration to release energy for the growth of the organism until true leaves are formed. Take note, huh? I already can say this is highlighted. I've never highlighted anything in this, in this lesson until now which means it's so important. So if you have notes, you, you have just said right now, I have to know what the seed leaf is for, okay, or the function of the seed leaf. And then you can refer back to this and write this down again and again, many times until you can memorize it. Explain why John did not place all the containers under direct sunlight during the first few days of the experiment. Firstly, it's first few days, that means the seed is still inside the soil. That means there's no light able to penetrate, right? No direct sunlight. Why? Because it doesn't need light. We just discussed that it doesn't need light. It has its own food already. It doesn't need to make food through the light where photosynthesis. No need photosynthesis. So these are the reasons in quick format. Okay, no need photosynthesis. See how I write the notes very fast. How do we write this down as an answer? You must say John did not place all the light under direct sunlight because the seedling does not require light to go through photosynthesis. It already contains its own food. Okay, there you go. Okay, the seedlings have yet to develop its true seed leaves and will depend on the seed leaves for food. Therefore, I do not need to trap sunlight for photosynthesis. So what can I do? Shall I highlight? You need to know why it does not need light. Wow, magic again. <laughs> so, the seedling do not need to trap sunlight. You need to know two things. Huh? You need to know what the seedling is for. It already has food, so it doesn't need food. It can survive on its own under the soil. and doesn't need light because it also has its own food already. No need the, any leaves or any photosynthesis to take place. It's not required. Okay, so these are the reasons, but you need to be able to write them yourself. Okay, now that was the plant parts. Second part, plant transport system. Ta -da. Ta -da. See, very fast, you can draw a plant very fast. Okay, I've got stem, I've got leaves, I've got roots. How does the water, how does the water go up? And what else? How does the food that is made here come down? This is the whole, whole essence of this part. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes break and you can come back exactly at 3.45 and 40 seconds. See you in a while. The rest who are just staying with me, okay, we need to identify, okay, I will not move the slide until the two minutes up, don't worry, you can go and come back, you can go and have a drink or whatever, but I'll see you back here, don't miss out the first part. I, those of you who are staying with me, I need you to identify these two things. What is the xylem for and what is the phloem for? They are inside here. Okay. Most of us know, okay, it's to transport. So it is under this um, topic called plant transport system. So you're going to transport something up, you're going to transport something down. And these two parts of the plant will be doing the tubes. But they are actually tubes. They are called xylem and phloem, but you need to know which one transport which one. Which one transport water, which one transport food. So try to unlock your memory. Hey, I learned this in school before, but I forgot which one is water, which one is food. So try to remember that. Then we will cover that 
in about, I think we've got one minute left. Okay, two minutes uh, goes very fast. Okay, that's it, done. Enough time for us to get our two minutes of meditation. Okay, let's go. Okay, so so of you are back. I'm actually going to cover just a few questions before we summarize today's lesson. And this is called reverse engineering with questions instead of doing notes first, which we have done the last two weeks. Notes, then question, notes, then question. Today is question, then notes. And the notes, I won't even have any notes actually. I'm just going to summarize by writing down what we learned today, which is actually notes, right? You're going to write down notes on your phone as well in the, in the paper that you have in front of you. You can write down together. Okay, let's go. Question one, Ming Hui removed. This is a very common question. You always remove the outer ring of the stem or sometimes they call it the bark. And then you find out, hey, you may be cutting off one of the tubes. Remember the food carrying tubes, and there is a water carry tube. Okay, remember you need, so I have, to, I have to draw quickly again. This one, right? And then this. See, it's very fast. And then I draw water, go up, right? This is very clear. And then food from here will go down. And therefore, inside the stem, they have two tubes to carry this up and down. Therefore, when I erase all these, I only have two tubes. One is inside and one is probably outside somewhere here. So they have to draw some colors. Let's see. Let's do some coloring. Can you see? Okay. So what happens is the food carrying tubes between the position X and Y were removed. Okay. So this brings down the food because it's the outside. Whereas the water is having a lot of fun going up, no problem at all. Ta -da, water going up. Okay. You see the difference? So when you cut around the bark, what happens is the food stops going down because you are cutting this and you're cutting this. Do you see the difference? The, the reason why in the diagram, when you cut the outside, you actually cut away the food supply that is going down, but water still continues to go. Okay, let's look at all of you, eyes on the screen. I'm going to erase something. So can you see what I'm going to erase? Saw that? Gone. How can the food come down now? The food cannot come down. Now. So food will get stuck where it's made so whatever has been made here can you see now we look at the diagram on the left where i'm coloring can you see the food is trying to come down it's actually trying to come down this way and come down here right but it can't go down further the poor roots and the rest cannot have any food so what happens is the food gets stuck here and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger. so it becomes a bit swell so therefore you will have a swelling at the top part where the food is trying to come down. Water, no problem. Huh? Water is still going up because it's in the center. It has not been cut off. So it is still going. Water is okay. Whereas food is not okay. It's getting stuck. So answer is C. That's the only one where the food is getting stuck above only. The rest of them, there's swelling below and above, cannot be. This one, no swelling at all. B, no swelling at all. D, swelling at the bottom. But C has swelling on top only, which is exactly the same as the diagram we draw here. Swelling above here. Okay? So, after doing question one, question two is so easy, right? 
part X must be the leaf, part Y must be the roots. So anything coming down must be the food. Anything going up must be the water. That's all. So you go to the answers and look for X is leaf. Y is root. P is food. Eh? Not this one. This one. All right. So what is sugar? Sugar is the food. Okay. So answer is D. Easy one, this one. And the same thing goes for number three. So we will go through this very fast. Again, P is leaves. Q is stem. Roots. Oh my God, super easy. So the answer is A. So let's go for more difficult stuff. A plant has a transport system. Substance X and T are transported in a plant system. Usually is food and water. Okay, so identify as going to the leaf. Now, you must see, is it going to the leaf or going to the root? Okay, so I want to see my favorite people who are, okay, who want to answer, raise your hand. Who want to answer, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, Lord Moon Chong. Moon Chong? Is Law Moon Chong raised his hand, but he can't say because his voice is not being heard. Okay, next person. Umer Zakaria. Yes. Hi, Umer. Uh, we have a screen is asking us what is the name of substance S and substance T. Substance S is the water. Uh, substance S is the food. No, no, substance X is the carbon dioxide. Well, substance T is oxygen. Okay. Thanks, Umir. Now, let's try. Oh, so many raised hand now. Okay, just now, Munchong. When I unmute you, you will get a message asking you to say mute, unmute. So you have to click on it. Are you there, Moon Chong? Still, I think you can't find the button. Okay, let's say uh, Joshua. Is it water and food? I guess. Yeah, the, the, I've already written down the answers actually. There's, uh, Ume, you have to take note, we're not talking about oxygen here. Uh, oxygen and all these are gaseous exchanges. We're talking about respiration plant. Now we're talking about transport system. It's not respiration. That means inside the plant, what moves up, what moves down, right? So we just discussed about water moving up from the roots and food will move down from the leaves. So therefore, this arrow, this arrow that comes out from the leaf must have been food. Okay, so substance T is food. What goes to the leaf must be water. Okay, so please take note of that. Okay, clear? So that's the answer. This is very straightforward, but yet some of you are still confused. Like, hey, how come suddenly talking about water, and oxygen, and carbon dioxide? Oxygen and carbon dioxide is a respiration process or a photosynthesis process. During respiration, plants, in order to live, they will also take in oxygen and give up carbon dioxide. During photosynthesis, they will take in carbon dioxide and give up oxygen. This is the gas exchange. We are not talking about gas exchange. We are talking about food and water exchange. This is what we are identifying in the food, the transport system. Transport means within the plant itself. Nothing to do with the outside air or whatever. Okay. 
Next one. Again, you cut the branch. Remember, I talked about cutting the branch. Depends on what you cut off, right? Again, you have the tube in the center and you have the tube at the sides, which actually bring the food down from the leaves and the water up. Right? And the food comes down. Now, if you cut away the side, again, you will have no food given from the leaves. Remember where the leaves? Let's color it green. Where are the leaves? There. Only this side there is, I see all the leaves, right? So the food is trying to get to the other side, right? Where is the food trying to get to? The food will descend all the way to every part. However, this branch X, we cut away the outside, which means we cut again. I'm going to erase, we cut away the food supply. Therefore, there's no food. So therefore, will the branch X grow better or grow branch Y will grow better? If there's no food, something is missing. He's going to get a lot of water because the water continues to come, but food is being cut off. So branch X will start to die. So no food is being given to branch X. So only branch X will fall off. Branch Y will continue to survive. So question, answer, which branch X or Y would the tomato fruit grow bigger over time? Which fruit? Uh, branch Y. Yes, branch Y. Good. Okay, so answer is branch Y. I already explained why, right? By now, you should know about cutting the branches. Okay, next one. Samantha observed that the leaves, okay, again, cutting the branch. So now, what do you think I'm doing here? I'm trying to expose you to questions that are coming out in your PSLE, in your exam papers. And everywhere you go, you see students or people, Samantha and John and Joseph and whatever name they give you in the question, is always cutting out the branches and it's always cutting the outer ring. Okay, outer ring. And if he's cut the outer ring, he cuts away the food supply. But if they cut a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, cut until they cut away the water as well, that means they cut too much. Then both food and water can't go in. So that's what this is going to happen, right? Because Samantha, in part A, she removed, or in part B, she removed only 1 cm, a little bit. And in part A, she cut more. So maybe she removed the water as well. So please take note. So Samantha observed that the leaves above part A died after two days. Explain this observation clearly. Above part A died. This part died. That means they did not receive water or food. Why? Because you cut away 3 cm. Basically, you are cutting away water and cutting away food. So, so that's why you have to tell the answer. When the 3 cm was removed, both the food carrying tubes, both, okay, and the water carrying tubes were removed. Therefore, the leaves above part A cannot receive water by the roots for photosynthesis to make food, and therefore they will die. Very nice answer. Okay, this is how you answer because we're only talking about above A. Only above A. We haven't even come to B yet. We are going to expect them to say because this is part one. What are they going to do with part two? Oh, which part of the above diagram shows the observation at part B then after some time? Part B, let's see. Part B. Let's highlight part B then. Part B is here. Where will the swelling be? Remember, she only cut 1 cm. So, water will go up. It will continue to go up. Whereas, food trying to go down will not. So, there will be a swelling here. Again, you need to be able to draw this, right? So, therefore, it will be like this. Swell. And then, straight. Can you see? So, let's redraw that in white or yellow. White color can see very clearly. White, a swelling. And this is the new part B, and then like that. So you need to choose this as the answer, which we did before. So which one? P, Q, R, or S? Let's ask those people who raised their hand. Munchong, you keep raising your hand. I'll mute you. You must press the button and say, can you can you talk, Munchong? Yes. Okay. Ah, okay, can you now? 
Muncul. Say something. What's the answer here? P Q R S. P. Sorry. P. P. Yes, that looks exactly like what I drew just now, right? Thank you, Muncho. Finally, you are in. Okay. So P is the answer. Ah, but Muncho only get one mark. Why? Because he only answered this. What about the rest? Okay, why? Because exactly why I went and did this. Look at this. How did I get this answer here? I started explaining here, right? If the food carry tubes are cut off because you only cut off one cm, then the food cannot transport down to the roots. Therefore, it will get stored at the region near the cut off part over here. So when the CM, one CM ring was removed, the food carrying tubes was removed. So food made by the leaf was being transported, could not be transported past this part, one CM ring. That's the food accumulated. Remember, some of you write accumulated, some of you write stored. Okay, therefore it becomes bigger there. Okay, it becomes swollen. Usually the word is swollen at the end. That's why I use the word swell. All right. So these are the key words that you need to take note. Uh, accumulate, I'm going to write down. The way you answer, you need these keywords in your vocabulary. They get stored or and do not get past the cut area and they swell. Okay, these are the keywords that you need to use. All right, that was the end. And look, the time is four o'clock. So, but I have a blank screen here. So, I'm going to summarize. Remember, we're going to do reverse engineering, like how I introduced to you. So maybe I can invite some of you to actually speak and tell me what are the things we learned out of today's lesson. So I can see some raised hands and you can raise your hand if you want to speak. Sri Ram, what did we learn in today's lesson? Uh, anybody? You have to raise your hand using the... Salim. Can you all unmute yourself? Is it possible? Okay, let me try. Huh? Okay, later I will let one by one talk. Let me try. Okay. Slug. Who is slug? Are you there? Slug? No. Celine, are you there? The internet is a bit slow, so you are un being unmuted very slowly. Okay. Let's try... Um, All those guru, try right? guru. Uh, we learned about the plant transport system. Yeah, that was the second half. So I'm going to really divide this page into two. This is the transport system. Thank you. This. Uh, so what do we learn about transport system? This one is about the parts. The food can tubes and the water can tubes. Sorry, a bit uh, louder, please. The food carrying tubes and the water carrying tubes. Very good. So where is the food carrying tube and water carrying tube? The food carrying tubes are on the outer side of the uh, stem and then the water carrying tubes is in the inner side. Okay, very good. Thank you. So let's listen to the summary that I'm going to make according to what Guru said. So... Let's finish off this diagram so that we all learn something. This is water. Very good. Now, can we name the tubes? I have yellow color tube and red color tube or white color tube. Let's do it white. Okay. Of course, um, if you want to carry on, you just can say it's from the leaves on top and roots are below. If that's not so important because we all already know that. So I'm going to actually take that out actually. You may want to have that in your notes, but I'm going to take it out because I'm focusing on what's more important. Now, what's the name of this? Uh, Celine. Some of you can't be unmuted. I don't know why. Maybe you mute yourself such that I cannot. Kevin Narayan, how about you? Um, the parts. Yeah, the name of the part. The xylem and phloem. 
Yeah. Not phloem, huh? not phloem. It's not phloem. <laughs> it's phloem. Okay. So it's flow um, and xi no. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Also, the plant transport system is like the hu is like the plant circulatory system. Yes, we haven't gotten into that, right? So we haven't gotten into that. So phloem and xylem are the two important names that you need to know. Which one is which? Let me teach you a easy way to remember. You may have okay. Remember pH means F sound, right? Remember F sound? Elephant. Telephone. pH is an F sound. So phloem, because it's phloem, not phloem. Phloem, because it starts with the F sound, which is the same as food. So the one that's transporting the food is phloem. Got it? Always. Very easy. Phloem transport food. Now xylem transport Water. Why? Because in our alphabet, you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, da 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 then W, X, Y, Z, which is here together, right? So W, X, Y come together, which means then you can remember xylem always have carries water. Is that good? Good? Okay. So now you can remember who carries what, right? Flowan will always carry food, xylem will always carry water. Now you remember the past much better. Okay, so these are the things. So when you see questions, what kind of questions they, can they give you in this part? Always cutting the bark and then cutting off either the food transporting tube or the water transporting tube and then they will ask you to identify what happens to the stem, the swelling, how come the food gets stuck here or water gets stuck here or both get stuck. If both get stuck, what will happen? That part of the plant will die. Okay, remember that because you don't have food and water. Where uh, even if you don't have food for a while, you will die also. If you have water, you for a while you will die also because the swelling, but then the rest of the part will slowly die. So you definitely cannot be cutting any anything off unless you can provide your own food. Can you provide your own food to the plant? No. Okay. Okay. So can I have uh, another participant, please? Anybody want to raise your hand? I want something for the plant parts. What do we learn from the plant parts? That was done like one hour ago. So see whether you guys remember. If not, I have to write down. Something to do with... Okay. Who's going to answer? Nashi care. Who's Nashi care? Come. What did we learn Roots. in the plants part? Roots. Uh-huh. Yeah. Start, start with the roots, right? Start with the roots. Stems. Leaves. Then... They have other stuff that we did not really concentrate on. Not so important. What does that mean? The more important one is this. Am I right? This is what we learn. Okay. And this is the transport part, which has the tubes. So therefore, they will go over to that side. Okay. How about before the roots form? What do we need? One important area of this lesson was germination. And in germination, we have something called a seedling, which is a small seed which is growing into a plant, and the seed leaf. And the seed leaf is super, 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 super important. This one. Because of his presence, he is able to contain the food and also provide the food to grow for growing and breathing and doesn't need photosynthesis, doesn't need light. So therefore, no light is required. Has food and no light is required. These are the two points we also learned from today's question. So you can see we can pick up those from questions. So you don't need to always, this is another study technique. You don't need to always go and study your book, textbook, your revision book and notes and notes and notes. It's too much. Every time you study, you forget. So what's the other way? You just go into your assessment book, open it up and practice because whatever you practice is the notes. Whatever you practice is the notes because you're going to practice germination in the question. You're going to practice phloem and xylem and cutting of trunk and what is being cut in the question. So you're learning the notes as you are doing the questions as well. Remember, 
So you don't need the notes. So forget about reading notes. Always do question. That's the other way. But those of you who like to read notes, you can read and read. No matter how many times you read, practice is the one that makes you remember it forever. So practice questions. The notes will automatically store in your brain. If you practice questions, the notes will automatically store in your brain. You don't even need to write lots of notes and in your textbook and books because that will just become a huge pile. Can you carry the pile of notes to your exam? You can't. But can you carry your brain to your exam? You can. So do you want to store the notes in your brain or on the paper? You answer your own question. All right. It's 4.10 and I will see you in next week's lesson. You can download the full lesson after tonight or tomorrow and then you can view the lesson again if you want to and also pick up notes and also download the notes if you want to. So this is me, Ali, signing off. See you next week on the same channel, hopefully with as many as you who have been here today. Bye-bye.